Hey everyone! Recently I've had Queen Glory on the brain, so today I want to talk about her and her career as leader of not one, but two tribes. Glory is easily one of the youngest queens to be seen in the Wings of Fire series. Although we've seen other young queens like Snowfall and Pearl in Books 14 and Darkstalker, it's pretty rare. Although she began Arc 1 as one of the Dragonettes of Destiny, Glory completed it as queen of both the Rain Wings and the Night Wings, something that would remain unique until we saw Queen Wasp's monarchy in Book 11. But the more I think about it, the more I begin to wonder, should Glory be Queen of the Rain Wings? Is she the best dragon for the job? What might her limitations be? And what might her strengths include? Something that occurred to me the other day was just how young and inexperienced Glory would be. I mean, think about it. She's still a dragonette by Wings of Fire standards. Or at the very least, she's a young adult by now. I'm not exactly sure how much time has gone by since Arc 1. But anyways, she's young. Glory also grew up underground, basically the farthest possible experience from the rainforest and the politics of being part of a tribe. And I don't mean politics politics, I mean social politics of how to act and who to talk to and what's socially acceptable and whatnot. Because all societies have these little cues on how to act, and let's face it, Glory and the rest of the dragonettes would be woefully unprepared. Glory probably isn't ready for a normal society, let alone the complications of leading a tribe. She grew up surrounded by hostility and constantly having to fight to prove herself. How would she function in a tribe as easygoing and accepting as the Rainwings? Would she be snappish and angry, growing frustrated eventually with all the things that don't line up with her expectations? Would the other Rainwings culture annoy her? Plus, Glory grew up in an environment with a pretty harsh power system. From what we saw, the Guardian Dragons had pretty much absolute power, and they didn't much care how the Dragonettes felt about their actions. How would Glory's only conceptions of what it is to lead match up with the Rainwings' more live-and-let-live live ideas on ruling? It's really interesting once you get more into the details on what it takes to lead a tribe. How many good examples of queens has Glory actually experienced, if any? Has she been forced to just make this up as she goes? Hopefully not all of it, since it seems like dragons like Grandeur and the other dragonettes have been there to help Glory figure out what she's doing. And of course, I don't think Glory is all limitations. I think she brings a lot of strengths to the table as well. For one, the fact that Glory hasn't seen how other queens function is as much a good fortune as it is a bad. I mean, look at how the other tribes are run. For all that they might be smoother, they seem much less happy than the Rainwings, and eventually the Nightwings under Glory's rule. Since Glory has never seen the old examples of queens, her rule would be pure, so to say, untainted by outdated ideas and traditions that hurt tribes in the present. She has the chance to pick and choose what traditions to carry over, and which traditions can be done away with. Additionally, Glory has shown that she's more than willing to take the hard path and risk mass disapproval to do what she thinks is best for her tribe. On that note, Glory has also shown an impressive amount of selflessness when dealing with her tribe. Take for example how she dealt with Icicle. Instead of demanding some kind of brutal punishment for her or something that might have been revengeful and personally satisfying, Glory showed a lot of maturity in moving on from past hurts and thinking about the future of her tribes. Glory asked for a moon globe clipping, thinking more about how it would help her tribes than petty shows of revenge. This is a new concept for queens, and something I would love to see more. Hopefully, Glory will be a good role model for the other young dragonettes in the line of succession, showing how to be an empathetic and progressive queen. Other queens, such as the Skywing Queen Ruby and the new Sandwing Queen, Queen Thorn, have already shown similar actions in their own rules. I would just love to see how someone like Glory inspires the next generation of queens, or something like that. I think it would be a really neat path for her character to take. Glory is goal-oriented, driven, and doesn't seem interested in personal game or slacking on the job. She never wanted to be queen, but she saw a position that needed filling and a tribe that needed help, and she stepped up. This is the basis for good leadership anywhere. An attitude of service rather than a love of power or wealth. Glory's entire tenure as queen, from the moment she realized how poorly the Rainwings were led, was born of a need to fix a problem. This is exactly how leaders should be thinking. So to conclude, do I think Glory should be the queen of the Rainwings? If it wasn't made obvious until now, yes, I do. Although there are some serious drawbacks and problems for her to work through, not the least of which are her age, lack of experience, and likely trust and social issues, I think Glory's strengths far outweigh her weaknesses. In the end, Glory is relentless in her work to bring positive change, in both her tribes and in herself, and looking at her drive and at the dedication of the dragons surrounding her, like Grandier, Deathbringer, and Kinkajou, I think her years as queen will be massively fruitful. 
Plus, even if you think Glory isn't suited to the job, that her age and temperament and past issues would, in the long run, create more problems than they fix, consider, she's kind of the only dragon for the job. <laughs> like, sure, Grandeur could step up, but if she was going to, she would have years ago. And that's kind of it. I mean, maybe a Nightwing could, but it'll be a while before the Rainwings trust them enough to let them have that kind of control. Glory may have problems, yes, but she's at least willing to take the task on. Plus, she's young, and she has decades to give to her tribe. Look at how effective and progressive her leadership has been, just over a few years. Imagine what her kingdom will look like in 10 years, 20, 30. Imagine what Glory will have to offer her tribes in a few years when she's matured and grown even smarter. Anyways, I think the future of the Rainwing tribe seems pretty secure as it stands. What do you guys think? Is Glory a good queen? How have you enjoyed her actions so far, seen from a distance in arcs 2 and 3? Should she stay queen, or should a different Rainwing, or hey, maybe even a Nightwing, take the throne? Remember to check out the description of this video to get links to my DeviantArt, Redbubble, and Patreon. There are plenty of different ways to find my art and to support me if you're interested. Also, check out all the lovely fan art at the end of this video. I really do have the sweetest fans. Y'all's personal messages and sweet comments really remind me why I do this. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and please have a wonderful week. If the kingdom is overthrown, meet me at the cornerstone. I know that I can't be without you. This bond is solid gold. We're a diamond and an emerald. It took me forever to find you.